guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, um, the, the, the section is, uh, is entitled High Quality Representation. And to me, high quality means something, a luxury, it's a car. Um, so I prefer to refer to meaningful representation. And that's for everyone. Whether you pay for it or not, that is our standard. And meaningful representation um, is a, it's a journey. I think that Mr. West said it this morning. We've heard about complex, you know, complex systems, and my uh, Patrick mentioned the maturity of a system. It takes a long time to put a legal aid system in place, to have schemes, to have legislation. But the reality is in the places where I've worked post-conflict, where you're starting from scratch, your clients are still being arrested. And they're sitting in prison. And they don't really care about legislative progress. They care about their rights. So what I would like to do is describe some initial uh, steps that can be taken to start instilling a culture of defense as everything else is happening, as legislation is being discussed, as um, everything that needs to be in the future. And by starting with a few lawyers and challenging certain aspects of practices, you can change the culture very fast. And I think governments, courts, prosecutors will then listen and understand the importance of the work we do. So changing the culture of defense takes place every day in a courtroom, in a police station, in a prosecutor's office. The IDF has developed a model that I think you would agree, or we think at least, is quite effective. Not the only effective model. But to change the culture, local, the, the, biggest, the biggest challenge is the practice. And I call the practice with a capital T and a capital P. In places where you work where there is no culture, where there's been a conflict, the law, the text of the law, has become meaningless. It is the practice. The older lawyers have set a practice. The younger lawyers learn from them. And that's the way it goes. So you have a constitution in Nepal that makes it clear that the right to counsel attaches at arrest. Well, so I ask, where are the lawyers at arrest in the police station? Well, it just doesn't happen that way. That's not the practice. OK. Then you have in Afghanistan, if, you don't, if you're not indicted within 25 days of arrest, you are released. OK. We have a client, 40 days. What's happened? Well, now it's not the practice. You know, you don't have time to investigate a case for an indictment within 25 days. Well. Too bad, you know? It's just too bad if you don't have the time. Just work. It's up to the prosecutor to do this. And it's up to lawyers from the get-go to give meaning to these statutes that are generally in place. OK, you generally, they are basic. I haven't seen a criminal procedure code that doesn't have basic rules for access to counsel in detention center, for a right to counsel early, maybe at arrest, within 24 hours of arrest. So the, what the ILF does is when it is asked to work in a country, it reviews the criminal procedure code, the constitution, and identifies whether the basic rules are there to provide proactive services. What are the basic rules we need to provide meaningful representation? We need a right to counsel early. We need access early. And we need speedy trial provisions. If you have these, once we've identified that these three, three rights exist, then we can fight the practices. So, you start with a few lawyers, because there's one thing is criminal defense is, 
It takes time for everybody in the system to, to get used to it. If the judges are not used to having a lawyer arguing, um, they're not, if the prosecutor's not asked about their files, it takes time for them to respond. And it takes litigation sometimes. So there's no reason, there's no room for many, many lawyers around. You can start with a few. We always start with two. And we're big believers in mentoring. So here is my pitch for mentoring. In places where uh, defense, the culture doesn't exist, I th we rely on practicing public defenders from other jurisdictions. May our pool is clearly in North America, Australia, and New Zealand, but we've had uh, lawyers from, from Europe and we welcome any lawyer. Um, it's important not to have professional trainers to mentor. When you need people who have seen a client in a detention center, you know, in the past month, not in the past 20 years. And these mentors, We'll read the laws along with ILF experts. And it's amazing what one can see when you read a statute for the first time without the history and the practices of a given jurisdiction. So you can ask the simple questions. Okay, the right to counsel is at arrest, what do you do? You don't, you know, you, you have an open mind. It's like a child who looks at something for the first time. And once you can, the mentor discusses these issues with the local lawyers, then it's a question of convincing the local lawyers that their laws support what we believe, what the statutes say. The change can come quite fast. And I'm going to give you just a few examples to show both in, um, in the West Bank, in Nepal, and in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, I gave you the example of the 25 day to indictment. My favorite conversation was with a prosecutor who said to me, but Nally, we don't have time to, to investigate within 25 days. I said, how long can it take you to beat out a confession out of a client? 48 hours, max, right? Okay. So they're, you know, fine. All of a sudden, the indictments are either coming down within 25 days, or they're not coming down at all and our clients get out, as they should, as they should. The other thing is, in, in Afghanistan again, it's important to work for the mentor, to work with a local lawyer, because the culture that exists, we must understand as mentors. And my favorite story in Afghanistan was the Constitution in 2004 eliminated debtor's prisons. Now, I don't know if you still have debtor's prisons, but Afghanistan, had always had debtor's prison. You owe me money, you can't pay, you're locked up. So the, the Constitution says, you can no longer interfere with liberty for debt only. Well, that's the elimination of debtor's prison. Somebody from the outside has to explain that to any Afghan who has always known debtor's prison. In Nepal, we had a very successful time with arguing speedy trial issues. Nepal has a terrible problem of delays. So we had our first speedy trial. There has to be a judgment, I say, within three years. I can't really remember the details. And our, my, the lawyer said, but we can't. This is how it is here. So I said, and the judge will ask you, what are we supposed to do? This is how it is here. We have 5,000 people who are in beyond 3,000, so uh, three years. So I said, just argue that you don't, know, you don't really know the other 400, 999. We just have one guy, and his rights have been violated. And you know, things change. The Supreme Court agreed. Cases must be decided. That's what the rule says. There's no, nothing new in the legislation has happened. There's been no major change. Changes are being discussed by policymakers, by legislatures, but what's there is changing. The other thing that was interesting in Nepal um, was there was a there had been a child act that ha that had removed jurisdiction of children from the, the equivalent of a magistrate's court, and the the change was that the magistrate's court could hear juvenile cases when criminal cases 
when there was an adult co-defendant, well, it seems clear to anyone that it means that if there's no adult co-defendant, the kid is not in this, within, in this court. That changed, and it changed in six months. It makes a huge difference for juveniles, just as it makes a huge difference to have 25 days um, for the indictment. I'm not gonna go over my time because I appear in court in New York City and it's not something we're allowed to do. So I'm gonna sit down and I'll be happy to uh, give you other examples later on if you're interested. Thank you.